Growing up, my dad was big into bootlegging movies with his camcorder. I have distinct memories of him renting movies from Hollywood Video and taping two, three movies together per tape. There was something magical about putting in a tape marked with Sharpie that just said Alien on it, only to find that Alien led into MSTs with commercials still intact. Lake Nowhere genuinely feels like a shot on VHS movie from the 80s that someone forgot was on the tape, so it got sandwiched between other bootlegs. It's also a Halloween special for adults. What I'm saying is I love this movie. Lake Nowhere is a 2014 horror film directed by Christopher Phelps and Maxim Van Scoy. It's a short film clocking in at about 51 minutes, and I went into this movie completely blind the first time I saw it. The whole film looks like a VHS bootleg, and it genuinely manages to have moments where you feel like you really did just find this bootleg, and it was really shot in the 80s. The plot is super simple. A group of not teenagers go to a cabin in the woods, and then they die because there's a mass maniac there by the lake. It is, at its core, a slasher with light supernatural elements. Alright, so let's get started with this poster. Here are my reference photos. They are stills from the movie. Lake Nowhere already has a great painted poster, to be honest, so I tried to do something different than that main poster. The movie starts out with fake trailers and commercials, with the tape skipping around and having tracking lines like it's been degraded by age and repeatedly having new things recorded on top of it. As it evens out, there's a trailer for a Gallo film followed by a beer commercial for Wolf White Beer that is absolutely adorable and modern real beer commercials wish they were that fun. Unlike the Grindhouse movie, they don't wink and nod blatantly at the audience that these are fake trailers per se, but you definitely know that they are fake trailers. The only trailer that toes the line where it feels like it could be a real movie is the Harvest Man one. I don't want to talk up the Harvest Man trailer too much because I don't want anyone to be disappointed in its awesomeness. So it's just a sci-fi horror trailer about an everyday man whose farm starts unexpectedly doing great, and then the plants take over. If it was a real film, I'd expect it to be like the color out of space meets the stuff. Then the movie starts. Our group of friends are Bonnie, Greg, Danny, Alexis, Gail, Clyde, and Mike, and they get to the cabin to set up for their weekend there. Bonnie and her dog Fozzie wander around and stumble onto a weird gravestone and read it and then say cool. Danny goes swimming, no one else wants to, and when the night falls, they all go party except for Danny who never came back. They half-heartedly call for him from the cabin and there's a mass maniac who at this point only the audience knows is there. He watches them. Danny appears, ice blue, acting strange, and they lay him on the couch and he falls asleep. Bonnie wakes up to Danny eating Fozzie and acting like a zombie. Now, I hate it when a dog dies in a movie, but in this case, the dog corpse prop is so, it's so fake. It looks like a felted puppet. It's absurdly fake, it's fine actually do really like that at that moment Bonnie totally attacks him for killing her dog. Danny bashes Bonnie's face in, everyone wakes up, they shoot Danny, they bandage her face, everyone is tense, Mike, Greg, and Clyde die, Alexis and Gail try to escape in the car, but the mass maniac kills Alexis, Gail wakes up in the morning as the maniac is gathering their bodies and attempts to confront him, but dies. The maniac pulls all their bodies into the water, but when he gets to Bonnie's, she's totally not dead, and she recites the gravestone to him. That makes him throw down his machete like a Scooby-Doo villain dashed by them pesky kids and walk into the lake for the little hands to all reach out and pull him in. She gets up, walks into the lake, and the credits roll. Now, 
This film does a really good job of making you like these people. None of them fall into tropes of what horror movie victims usually are. None of them are cartoons. That's what's almost weird for this type of movie. If I hadn't gone into this movie blind, I'd have expected like a pure gimmick short, like Kung Fury or something, but it's not. It takes itself seriously for the most part, and I am consistently shocked at how likable these characters are. They aren't like remarkable characters, there is no like deep character development by any sense of the word, but while this isn't a found footage horror film, they establish what the most of the found footage horror movies fail at. They act like real people and it feels like you are watching real people, at least until the kills start. The voyeuristic shooting style, which was definitely a homage to Halloween, played into the shot on VHS style in that this is clearly a movie made out of the system. And it feels like then literally anything could happen. The build to Danny coming back freezing cold in, as a zombie is played straight too, which I really appreciate. It's tense. And that shot of his feet staggering into the house is unsettling. The film does, however, have sound that is quite rough in places, but the dialogue is very natural, and it does explain away why they are not as concerned about Danny disappearing without stopping the movie to make sure you get all the information. Also, while so much horror leaves strings even at a two-hour runtime, like, Nowhere attempts to pay everything off, and it for the most part, succeeds. There is a gun, and it is set up, and it is paid off. There is a clothesline that's very obviously drawn attention to, and then it is also paid off. The car is actually used, and when Danny says, it felt like hands touching me, it alludes to the lake being the real evil to the audience. The only real problem I have with the film is I really hate the tease of Gail waking up in the car and picking up the axe to confront the maniac. It is the one scene in the film that falls entirely into parody. Other bits, like Danny bashing Bonnie's head in for too long, also veer too close to parody for me, but the Gail with the axe bit crossed the line. There's nothing wrong with horror parody, but for a film that sells itself on how authentic it feels, that scene breaks the immersion for me. It's a scene that's too self-aware of the film that it's in. In general, the gore elements are so over the top and silly, including a fun decapitation, but none of them overstay their welcome, so it's less, hey, look at how funny it is that this looks so fake, and more, oh, woo, fun! Now, the supernatural elements are fine, but they are the least worked out part of the film. It's never really made clear why they have a picture who, of someone who looks like Bonnie in the house, why the gravestone has a weird inscription on it that makes the maniac stop. I do like how the tape does frame Bonnie like she's the protagonist or the would-be final girl, but it's not in an over-the-top way, so a horror fan would think she's going to be the only one to survive and then they almost immediately have her be attacked and then they make it seem like she's dead by having her head hit that nail on the wall only for her to super not be dead. As it's revealed that the mass maniac is performing a ritual to the lake by bringing dead bodies into it, it never really says why, but if it did I think it would have ruined it. Yes, I know, I just mentioned a thing that sounds like a problem and said fixing it would ruin it, but hear me out. Do you really want a long scene where, I don't know, there's a gas station worker they met on the way to the lake that says, be careful of that lake up there, that lake was cursed by Satanists and now demons live inside it and they need a sacrifice every 11 years. Nah, we don't need that. 
it would bring the movie down and take away from the fact that it feels like someone totally made this in their backyard in like 1982. The lake is evil. The lake needs blood. Someone has to give it blood. The end. There doesn't need to be anything deeper than that. Lake Nowhere knows its audience doesn't need to be spoon-fed to. It's a sort of gimmick short, yes. But the gimmick is being as authentic as possible. It's like a magic trick. You know it's a trick, but it still feels like magic in the moment. Instead of getting an exposition dump, we get lots of spooky atmosphere. This movie is so set in fall, it's great. There's even an adorable jack-o'-lantern in the background at a certain point, so just make sure you know that it is fall. The setting is never entirely grounded in a specific time or place, so it's like unspecific vintage New York during spooky time to me. Like I said earlier, there's even a spooky graveyard just chilling by a spooky lake. It's great. Maybe it's because I can obviously tell that it's upstate New York that I love it so much, but it does just feel like such a Halloween movie, even though it is an understated Halloween movie. The spooky atmosphere is also sold by how great the music is. The music consistently is wonderful throughout the movie. The basic Lake Nowhere theme that's like the score is really fun. And then there's also like band music in the film that are actual like songs that are, they're really good. Like I'd listened to the soundtrack a few times while painting this painting and it's great. It's going to be in rotation for me from now on during Halloween time. I tried to read as much as I could easily find online about the production. I'll link to the interviews I read below. Basically though, the idea really was to make a film that felt like a bootleg, where you weren't sure entirely what it is, but you keep watching it anyways. The whole thing was shot in six days in upstate New York with two weeks of pre-production. Apparently they lost their original cabin, and the one they shot in was found at the very last second. There is some CGI in it because the lake was surrounded by other cabins, so they had to digitally remove them, but I honestly would have never known. The beer commercial and the Gallo trailer were made during the post-production, while the Harvest Man trailer was something that was made a year earlier. And they actually did transfer the film to VHS and then back and forth on tapes to get that degraded VHS look. It totally sells it. It's one of those looks that you can just tell when it is put on digitally versus when it's the real thing. Lake Nowhere is like a movie I would have stumbled upon as a kid sandwiched between two unrelated movies on a mismarked tape. It's fun and light while being genuine. It's a film I'll be throwing on every year when the leaves fall.